ladies and gentlemen, greetings and salutations to you all. Kluger welcoming you back to a little bit of a Grim Dawn build update video. For any of you familiar with my channel, you'll recall not too long ago I put out a little build update, build idea guide thingy for a bleeding conjurer character, conjurer, which is occultist and shaman, uh, focusing on the use of bloody pox, triggering your devotion skill a falcon sweep over here with the uh, with the falcon devotion constellation i wanted to give you guys a, um, an update video to this guide sorry to this build because it's coming along really really well and really interesting i've been doing some live streaming with this build and trying to just grind it up as much as possible uh, getting some advice from some good buddies in the grim dawn realm who have suggested some ideas and here's where we are now of course, I have been working on it myself and coming up with my own ideas and approaches to how the build should work. And so far, look, I'm not going to call it overpowered <laughs> because it's got its own problems like every build does. But by the same token, it's pretty brutal. Like in terms of dealing with big packs of enemies, it's pretty bonkers. It's got this funny inverse relationship with enemies in that the more enemies you have, the more damage you deal because we're relying on skills that need to either spread or uh, act on like a tick, I suppose you would say. Um, ergo, or AKA rather, Entangling Vines, which is found in the Shaman Tree over here. So Grasping Vines and Entangling Vines, I should clarify. So the more enemies we have either getting poxed or getting entangled, uh, means more damage for us and crazy amounts of bleeding damage ensue. So I'm just I'm just running around at the minute trying to show you guys what's happening with the build, how it's kind of working and all that sort of jazz. Um, so you get a general idea for how the build is designed thus far. And I don't mean by any token to suggest this build is finished. I know it's only level 40, but it, it was exciting. And, you know, I'm going to see it through till it's a bloody end. No pun intended. Um... Because it's it's proving to be really interesting, and I want to test the viability of it. I don't know how far I can take it, and I don't know how squishy it's going to be in the long run. But that is what we want to find out. So, I'll talk you through the skill selection I've gone with so far, and how it links into Devotion. And then we'll talk a little bit about how, well, a little bit about weapon choice as well, and then just how it all sort of ties together in the end. So, without further ado, we will talk about the Shaman Tree first, since we are here. Um, I've got four points in Devouring Swarm right now with the intent of maxing that out or getting it close to. Uh, so far, a few points in Grasping Vines, uh, which is, it does nice bleeding damage and stuff. I probably will crank it to near full, as I will Entangling Vines. So far, I'm focusing more on Entangling Vines because of the fact that it's got this chance to immobilize or slow targets, uh, which means that they stay more bunched together, more of them get affected by the attack, as well as... Um, Bloody Pox can spread more effectively. It's really cool to have enemies stuck. And that also helps our survivability in a, in a secondary way because they just can't get near us. Um, I've also put some points into the Magdro Mog Dragon's Pact line to help with some survivability. As the build can tend to be a little bit squishy, so that's going to help us out as well. Potentially, in the long run, I will try and gun it for Primal Bond, the ultimate skill up the end here. Because at one point, it gives us 25% bleeding damage. If points allow, I will go up to that point. As for Occultist, uh, a little more simplistic, I suppose. Oh, it's about the same, really. <laughs> One point in Doombolt so far, up in the top right-hand corner. I may put a few more points in here. Uh, it's nice single target damage because, as I was mentioning, uh, this weird relationship with more enemies equals more damage. So we can struggle against single targets a little more. So having that point there is helpful. Uh, the line here in Bloody Pox, as you can see, it's divvied up. To be honest, a little bit randomly right now. I'm finding Wasting to be most useful right now because of its minus um, offensive ability to enemies, which is really handy for us in terms of their ability to hurt us and as well as the percentage bleeding damage. I'm using this, of course, more as a carrier for Twin Fangs, as you can see there, which I haven't yet gone into. Uh, I will probably try to put more points, at least in the base skill and into Wasting. I'm not too fussed with Black Death. I may even take the take the points out or take leave it at one for the chance to confuse enemies. Uh, Curse of Frailty maxed, thanks, uh, m mainly, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> mainly due to the minus bleeding resistance that we have there. Of course, we need to stack bleeding, um, 
debuffs on enemies to make it effective, particularly against Undead. So far, just one point in vulnerability because we are dealing some vitality damage as well, and it nerfs defensive ability on our enemies. More points to be um, put in there as points allow, and one point into each of Aspect of the Guardian and Blood of Drig for a little bit of survivability. Now, devotion-wise, I've chosen three skills uh, sorry, three constellations with proc skills on them, which might seem a little bit overkill and may prove to be so in the long run, as I have not invested in any survivability from Devotion. So I have got the Bat constellation, which is all bleeding and vitality damage buffs. We are doing a little bit of vitality damage, so that's nice as a secondary damage source. And I've got the Twin Fangs skill on there, 20% chance on attack. Does a bunch of vitality piercing damage. It uses our main hand at uh, main hand damage as a damage source, 19% um, uh, damage at the moment uh, from that skill, which will go up as Twin Fangs levels. And the uh, attack damage converted to health is also quite nice there, as a little bit of a survivability assistance. Uh, I've got Falcon and Falcon Swoop, as I mentioned in the previous video update for this build. Um, again, this is also using main hand damage at the moment, 45%, and I believe it makes its way all the way up to 70% at max level, if I'm not mistaken. Five projectiles at this level as well. It does a lot of bleeding damage, as you can see, 1,851 at the current rank, and 100% chance to pass through enemies. It's pretty mental, and I've got, I've got that bound to devouring swarm now. Um, because Entangling Vines, sorry, Grasping Vines, now has Rend on it, 20% chance on attack to trigger, it has a 5 second duration and does 1,220 bleeding damage per second. Crazy amounts of damage. And that's only at rank 4 out of 15. It has a 2.6 meter radius. It uh, nerfs offensive ability and nerfs bleeding resistance on enemies. Awesome debuff and massive damage source. All bundled into one. So I've put that on my primary uh, attack, which is Grasping Vines. Now, this all ties together because I'm using all those three skills in quick succession on enemies. Uh, I'm usually going in with Curse of Frailty as an immediate debuff, then trying to slap down Grasping Vines as quickly as possible, sneak in a Bloody Pox, look, here we go, bang, bang, Bloody Pox if I can cast it on someone, keep Entangling Vines going, and then in the meantime, be casting as many uh, Devouring Swarms as possible. So basically, I'm trying to give my, uh, so I give the character as much chance as possible to proc as many different uh, damage sources as it can. Each is very important. Bang, there we go. So Curse of Frailty, trying to cast, Grasping Vines as soon as it comes off cooldown, and then we just throw out as many Devouring Swarms as we can. So everything kind of works together in symbiosis, of course. Because we've got, ooh, a book. So, you know, Entangling Vines and Grasping Vines with Rend on it debuffs the bejesus out of enemies and does a lot of bleeding damage. Curse of Frailty stacks that negative bleeding resistance on enemies. Bloody Pox nerfs their offensive ability, does more bleeding damage, and has a chance to trigger Twin Fangs, doing more goodness for us. And then finally, Falcon Swooped on Devouring Swarm, massive amounts of bleeding damage, and Devouring Swarm does decent damage with 100% chance to go through enemies, as well as being a debuff to bleeding and vitality damage. <laughs> so I hope you caught all that. Alright, here we go. There's a, a nice fun hero monster to kill. This will probably be a good example of how we do less single target damage. I'm getting a bit pummeled. Oh, he died pretty quick. There you go. Made a liar out of me. Thanks a lot, chump. But look, that's... Oh, no. I did want to talk about weapon as well. Now... I was using sword and board for a period of time, trying to tank enemies and make Falcon Swoop as effective as possible. Um, and then swap to, I know, swapping between like sword and uh, caster offhand as well. But then it occurred to me that you want to be using a two-handed weapon because they have the highest amount of weapon damage out of all the weapons in the game, as far as I'm aware anyways. Why do we want to do that? Because two of our three devotion constellation skills use main hand damage, as you can see here and here. So, of course, the higher our main hand damage, which of course is in a two-handed, is the only weapon damage we have. I just obviously will translate to more damage, basic mathematics and all that. So, I have swapped out the two-handers, <clears throat> and I was fortunate enough to find a near-perfect one. And I will show you it in just a second. I, you kind of had a glimpse of it there. It's the Farmstead Liberator, which is pretty freaking epic, man. I'm totally losing my voice right now. What the hell's going on? Here we go, Farmstead Liberator. So just basically a bunch of bleeding damage. 
So it's got that 258 bleeding damage there. Of course, it's got um, a buff to percentage bleeding damage, 154% there. 3% um, cunning, which also boosts our bleeding damage, and so forth. As well as having a huge amount of physical damage, which gets taken into account for our weapon attack, which is mental. Uh, as well as that, I've currently got a Blessed Whetstone on there, which is 25% bleeding damage as well as offensive ability, trying to walk, sorry, work towards a bloody Whetstone, which does even more uber bleeding damage. So that's going to be awesome. So yes, in conclusion now, uh, high weapon damage equals higher total damage for us, as, oh my god, I'm being so stupid right now. Am I still standing in it? The ether group, that is. So we have a bit of a problem here. I'm slowly killing it. There we go. Great job. So, there we go, guys. I think that covers all of it. I think I may have talked a little bit fast at a few points. So, to summarize. Did I really demonstrate Grasping Vines well enough? I think I did. Basically, what Grasping Vines does is like tick, 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 tick. It's really quite fast in, in how often it ticks. It ticks more often than Bloody Pox and isn't reliant on Bloody Pox spread. So, if you can just capture five or six dudes in a swarm of devouring oh my gosh <laughs> that's so confusing in a bunch of uh, grasping vines um it'll do huge amounts of damage so the build's really fun to play in my opinion uh just to summarize devotion constellation skills with percentage procs and combining that with skills that we use a lot and or tick a lot which mean they're going to have a greater and greater chance to activate the skill that combination is proving to be really potent so far in my opinion I'm not sure how far we're going to be able to take it, but we're doing a lot of bleeding debuff as well. So I'm hoping the combination of those two things, plus a little bit of bonus vitality damage and um, yeah, attack damage converted to health, is going to carry us through um, to ultimate. So that remains to be seen. Whoop. So here we go. Here, I'll show you grasping vines. Tick, 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 tick. Can you see how that? You can see how often that's ticking. And if you get five guys in there, or eight or ten guys amongst a bunch of grasping vines, it's going to have a really great chance of doing even more goodness and pain for enemies. And you can see how quickly they die as a result. Check it out. Not doing nothing. Boom. All on its own. So there you go, guys. A really fun build. I hope you guys do give it a try. I'm, of course, going to keep you updated as I continue to level it up. And I'll probably be live streaming this character in my future streams. So I hope this is something you enjoyed. Please do leave any questions or comments down below and I'll be sure to answer them. And I hope to talk to you again really soon. My name is Kluger and you have a great day.